Welcome to the IndiePro Grounding Loop instructional video. In this video, we will explore what workflows and order of steps you'll want to follow when connecting your power and video cable between your camera and your monitor. There's a lot of mystery about this lack of clarity in terms of what steps you should follow when doing this. I've even heard some people say that it's not a risk, but I can tell you it's a real thing. I fried two cameras. <laughs> when you power your camera from a battery, so here we go, we've got this camera that runs on two pin Limo to a D-tap. When this camera runs off, here we go, it's gonna run off this battery. Why don't we just turn it on? So now this camera is running off this battery and then this monitor can run off the same battery. A lot of people like to streamline your accessories, power everything from the same battery. So now this battery, both D-taps are going to two devices. Totally fine right now. But the way you normally use devices like this is you will connect your camera to your monitor with a video cable, whether it's HDMI or SDI. There we go. So this is how a setup would normally work. We've got a camera connected to a monitor with an SDI cable, whether or not they are both powered from the same battery, that's up to you. A lot of filmmakers do prefer to streamline the cable workflow, the battery workflow, just to use one battery on the camera. And if you're doing that, you run the risk of frying your system. So what do we know about how this frying is happening, why this frying is happening, when are we at risk? Main time when you're at risk is when the system is powered up. So when you turn on your camera, when you turn on your monitor, does the power connection have a correct working ground? And if it doesn't, what happens then? So what does that mean? If it doesn't have the working ground, the system doesn't have working power. It's not a completed circuit. It wants to complete the circuit. For that split second that is plugged in, if it's not seeing the ground in that connection, what it does is it searches for the ground in your video cable, whether it's an HDMI cable or an SDI cable, and it can go from your monitor to your camera, and that's a problem. You can fry the port on the camera, you can fry the port on the monitor, you're gonna end up sending your camera off to the manufacturer, the same with the monitor, you're gonna lose a port. The camera like this, where there's only the one SDI port, I guess you could switch to HDMI, but most people are gonna end up mailing the monitor in after you fry the input port. Definitely wanna avoid this. It's gonna be a big problem if you run into it in the middle of a job because this camera doesn't have another SDI port. This monitor doesn't have another SDI in port. So if this still works, you're gonna need another monitor or if this still works, you're gonna need another camera. If they're both toast, hopefully you brought backups. If you didn't bring backups and hopefully you haven't broken your equipment yet, <laughs> let's, hopefully we got to you first and can help prevent this frying from occurring. When you're doing this, you want to plug everything in while the video cable is not plugged in. Because like I said, when the grounding loop is occurring, it's traveling through the video cable. So if you turn everything on and your devices are fully powered up, without a video cable plugged in, there's no way for the grounding loop to occur. This is the key to the system, is to power everything up fully. You know, your screen is on, everything is green lights on, ready to go, saying no signal. You know, your monitor doesn't see signal and this isn't sending signal to anything because your SDI isn't plugged in. That means it's now time to plug in your SDI, connect, connect the SDI to the camera, connect the SDI to the monitor, and now things are gonna work. But you're not completely safe yet. You're not completely 
out of the woods. What you now need to think about is what happens when your battery gets low? What happens when you finish your shoot? If you start unplugging things, this could be another moment where there's power but no ground, and that's an issue. Because your video cable is still connected, so you can have that issue that we warned you about before. You definitely want to avoid power being disconnected while the video cable is still connected. So when you're changing batteries, when you're powering down, you want to unplug your video cables and then you can power down, unplug your power cables, change your batteries. What if you don't want to do that? What if you're worried you're going to make a mistake? If you want to be safe with a system like this, where you're powering multiple devices off the same battery, you need a safety tap. The safety tap eliminates the risk of this grounding loop issue. So what we'll do is we take these D taps out of the battery. Let's plug them into the safety tap. And this is a special safety tap that goes from our safety tap, which has a special chip inside that prevents the grounding loop to a power strip. So we can plug in our D tap plugs into that. Go from the camera to the strip. And now from the strip with the safety tap into our battery. So one of the great features of the safety tap is it has this light on top. This light is a status indicator, gives you an idea of what the voltage is doing inside and whether you have a good ground connection. Green means you have a good ground connection. So we can then power our devices up, but we don't need to wait to plug in our video cable until they're powered up now. Now we can leave everything plugged in, save us a little bit of time on set and streamline everything. I hope this clarifies a little bit of the workflow and the order of things when it comes to grounding loop. It's a very scary thing. It's a very risky thing. You can jeopardize your whole shoot just by plugging in the order the cable's wrong. Not something that happens every time. I'd say it's about 5% of the time when doing it wrong, you'll have an issue. I think this actually leads to a lot of the mystery and a lot of the confusion because you can get away with doing it wrong and think that it's totally fine. It's not until that you fry a camera or two that you really have to jump in and do some research and find out why because you don't want it to happen again and I'd recommend keeping an eye on when your SDIs are plugged in and if you don't want to keep an eye on that, invest in some safe taps because they will help save your ports. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching.